Good evening, Tony Dottino, founder of the USA Memory Championship and the president of Dottino Consulting Group, uh, talking to you about an article that I read this weekend out of the January issue of ARP Magazine. And again, talking about memory and the work that we've been doing through the online Maximum Memory Mastery course uh, just continues to affirm what we've been talking about over the past year as it relates to our overall memories and our brain health and things that we can do to become super learners. And I found this just fascinating. Here we are one year later and we've been presenting this or I've been doing this in my live with Tony in, in, in trying to encourage people to do things that really uh, help them with their brain health. And it was delightful to see this in the uh, current issue of Art Magazine and what Dr. Gupta is saying as what? COVID in the brain, but what he's talking about here is the latest findings tell us that COVID poses a risk to our minds as well as our bodies. Here's a five-step self-protection plan. So what he really is addressing here is how to build, what, a resilient brain. And this is what we've been talking about as part of our Maximum Memory Mastery online course. We've learned from people that there's a module in that, uh, in that online course that talks about brain health. And that now has caused us, from feedback we've gotten, to expand that to, into its own workshop, which Michael Dottino has uh, got uh, laid out and is ready to start narrating it, but are the, what we call the six elements on your wheel of brain health. Well, here's what Dr. Gupta is talking about, five simple steps towards growing a healthier, happier brain for now and in the future that can help minimize any of the cognitive impacts that COVID is having. And so again, connecting some of these, uh, I want to connect a couple of pieces. COVID, uh, they're finding is having some impacts on cognitive function. So how can we build a reserve of function that allows us to withstand some of the things that may impact us? And there's no studies on this and nobody's going to have any of this uh, study finished and done, but what can we do to uh, maintain some of the elements that we know can help us. So what do we have to lose? And as I always say, you know, you don't want to be a part of the post-study group. You want to be a part of the pre-study group and be one of the pioneers. So here we go. First thing he's talking about is though we want to maintain social connection in a physically distanced world right now, what you really want to be doing is maintaining social connection. Uh, one of our tips in brain health is social connection and the impacts that loneliness and isolation are having on us. So we don't want to be isolated. We don't want to be putting ourselves into a state of loneliness. And we're seeing some people that we know that are in assisted living right now that are really suffering from that impact and trying to be creative on how do you bring social interaction to that? How do you do that in a way that gives them the, the vibrance to keep on going and to realize you know, life can keep on continuing. So when you're asking about somebody's well-being, his tip is uh, go from I'm doing fine to really getting a, a little bit detailed about getting a degree of feelings that help them activate their thinking, that activate them to be engaged. And so what questions might you ask them that engage further than, oh, I feel fine, because that um, too often is the polite response and it really doesn't dive into the details. So that's his first tip. We've been talking about that as one of our spokes on, on the wheel of brain health uh, is um, social interaction. Next one he talks about is our nutritional things. So he talks about eating for resiliency. Well, we talk about that in our wheel of health. What are the nutritional elements that science continues to unravel for us that are important to our brain health that are important to uh, our uh, nutritional aspects of the foods that we should be eating and how they impact us. So processed and sugary foods raise inflammation. So his tip here is 
processed foods, the meats and cold cuts and sugars and soda drinks and things, uh, give us a inflammation, add to our inflammation uh, limits, uh, swap out uh, something that's processed and swap out a, a drink uh, for something that's a little bit more healthy. So fresh foods, uh, we're gonna continue to hear about uh, fruits and vegetables as opposed to processed foods of any kind. Third thing, so we talk about nutrition in our wheel. Third thing we keep talking about in our wheel of, of brain health is uh, exercise. Exercise and its power and what it does to help us maintain longer and healthier brains. Well, he talks about make, moving. Exercise remains key to mental sharpness and a healthy immune system. So we have known, and the science is just continuing to come out on this, uh, exercising is powerful for us. And we know, we talk about three different kinds of exercising now, and that's what I think is the latest. One is, we've known about aerobic because our brain is using about uh, 20 to 30 percent of the oxygen we breathe in. So we've known about aerobic. And then we took, we, we've been reading more and more, and I've been talking more and more about our anaerobic, the importance of physical exercise in terms of lifting some minor weights. Uh, and I say minor, you don't have to be a muscle builder, but you want to keep those muscles engaged. What we know is when you get to a certain age uh, and you begin to just become more of a couch potato and more just lying down and being more uh, idle in your body, uh, your, your muscles begin to atrophy at accelerated rates. And you don't want to lose any of that muscle mass. In fact, in one of my uh, science readings I was doing on cancer treatments, they're recommending people do some weightlifting weeks before cancer because the cancer eats at your muscles and when you go for oncology treatments and chemo and things, they want you to have stronger muscles. So second thing is muscle, and the third is having some form of stretching. Some types of stretching exercises that maintain a balance. And so I have uh, three programs that I do every week. Uh, one is I'm running uh, four days a week, and I'm putting in 90 minutes a week, and I'm running at a pace of about 11.30. The second thing I've looked at, I've learned more about label, um, Let's stay on exercise. I'm going to talk about nutrition, reading labels. Second is I'm doing uh, five-pound dumbbells. I do five-pound dumbbell exercises and stretching and turning and twisting and lifting. And I'm doing uh, repetitions, uh, three sets of 25s. And I do that three times a week. Uh, swimming when uh, the weather gets back up with us a little bit, three times a week. And then I'm stretching, doing a 20-minute stretching program every day. The stretching doesn't go without a day. So it's every part, and I do it while I'm watching TV. So rather than sitting watching TV, I do my weights watching TV. I do my uh, stretching exercises watching TV. Uh, no reason why you can't do that. And even watching TV, getting yourself into a, a chair of some sort and just getting up and down and up and down without listening and holding on to the arms. There are so many things we can do. I tell people, go find a cinder block or something to stand up, maybe four or five books on a pile and make sure that they're firm so you don't slip on the books, but standing up and down on the books for 10 minutes and do that you know, twice a, an evening while watching TV. It's good for your glutes, but it's also good for your aerobic. Uh, so there's things we can do, as Dr. Gupta says, right? Exercise remains key to mental sharpness and a healthy immune system, also to a healthy heart. The fourth thing he talks about is getting yourself sound sleep. And boy, here's the interesting part. We all know that it's important to get a sound sleep, but those that have insomnia or those that have a hard time sleeping, uh, boy, that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Well, I know I'm supposed to get a good night's sleep, but now my brain is just working and going like crazy. And that brings me to an article that I was reading uh, this week that talks about what? How do you relieve stress in your life? Dr. Gupta talks about resiliency. How do you reduce the stress in your life? So his number five tip here is ward off anxiety and fears by learning something new. So now you combine stress and learning new material, mental challenges, and here comes, you know, so what do we do to eliminate stress in our lives? So the tip that I was giving out last week was make it a point of learning something new before you go to bed. So in our online maximum memory mastery, it's, it's broken into five 
minute segments uh, with the purpose of taking a small segment and practicing a skill, remembering names of people, remembering a string of numbers, remembering uh, the order of a deck of cards, remembering a list of a series of words. It's broken into different lessons that have different subsets to them so that you can practice them just five minutes. So now take one of those lessons. Before bedtime, you want to release some anxiety and stress, right? We want to get rid of some of the stress in our lives. Well, guess what? Combine, get rid of stress and learn something new at the same time. So take advantage of that. And so those are my tips for this evening and uh, have a good evening. And uh, I will be back on Wednesday in the five o'clock hour and uh, we shall see you then. Till then, have a good night.